This video addresses common misunderstandings regarding the textual integrity of God's Word. The paper copied below is authored by Ella Schofield of Fish House Ministries. It is read and uploaded to YouTube with the permission of the author. Please visit ellaschofield.com for a PDF of this paper or beholdthebeast.com for the HTML version. Manuscript errors? Hello, brethren. Liberal scholars of many groups, Islamic scholars, and leaders of many other religious organizations question whether the Bible has been accurately handed down to us. It's been over 50 years since I studied textual criticism, so this little synopsis may not be in keeping with the latest science, but it's the best I can do from memory. Undoubtedly, some friendly Greek-Hebrew scholar or conservative textual critic will bring any additions or corrections to my attention via email. Some believe the Bible has been corrupted over time. It isn't true, and here is how we know it isn't. Last books of the New Testament were written by about 100 A.D. by the Apostle John, who was still alive at that time. We have over 5,300 partial or complete manuscripts in the New Testament pen prior to 4th century A.D. Though not assembled into what we now know as the New Testament until 300 A.D., those canonical writings of Jesus' apostles were being read all over the known world. Though it is disputed by some Messianic Jews, the New Though it is disputed by some Messianic Jews, the New Testament manuscripts were originally written in Koine Greek, then copied by early Christians into every language known to the world. Our major manuscripts are in Greek, yes, but we also have important early manuscripts in Latin, Syriac, Aramaic, Hebrew, and several other lesser-known languages. We have one small piece of the Gospel of John found on the Egyptian island of Elephantine that is early enough to be a piece of the original. It is impossible to support any kind of letter corrupting when we have those 5,300 early manuscripts that prove otherwise. In fact, because of this breadth of early manuscript support, textual scholars have concluded that for all practical purposes, we have the original documents themselves. For claim of tampering to be seriously considered, one would have to show that scribes from Syria, Babylonia, Galatia, Asia, India, Rome, Egypt, Greece, Carthage, Tarshish, and Macedonia, to name a few, all made the same mistake at the same time for the same doctrinal purpose. An utterly ridiculous idea. We have similar textual support for the authenticity of the Old Testament. Until a few years ago, the earliest documents we had for the Old Testament were later copies of a 70 B.C. Septuagint in Greek and a Masoretic text in Hebrew that could be positively dated to the 9th century A.D. However, with manuscript discoveries at Qumran made in the late 1940s, the Isaiah Scroll, the Book of Daniel, the Book of Jubilees, the Temple Scrolls, etc., etc., some of which could be dated in the 3rd century B.C., internal evidence within one Daniel Scroll dates it at 350. As a result, we can now state with some certainty that there has been no tampering with the canonical Old Testament manuscripts between 300 B.C. and 900 A.D. Despite the span of over a thousand years, the canonical manuscripts are virtually identical. To suggest there was tampering to the Old Testament documents prior to 300 B.C. shows a misunderstanding of Israelite scribal methodology and of their reverence for the scriptures. First of all, Biblical scrolls were written on the inside only to prevent smudging or smearing that might lead to a misreading of the text. When being copied, besides many parallel readings, copy was compared with the original in every way humanly possible. The words in each column were counted and then the letters. The first, last, and middle letter and word in each column had to be identical to the original. The number of words or the number of letters of the copy differed from the original the copy was destroyed. Then they counted the words and letters in the whole document. They divided the document into quarters and into eighths. The first, last, and middle letter in each section had to be the same. The number of words and the number of letters in each section had to be the same. The middle word and the middle letter in each section had to be the same. And they had to be the same for the whole document. If not, the copy was destroyed. Not corrected, but destroyed. Since there is absolutely no textual or historic evidence that the Old Testament was ever corrupted, any claim of editing must have been made by those religious authorities who didn't like what the Old Testament taught. There are some who claim late dating for Old Testament prophets, but that claim is unfounded as well. The books of Moses, originally penned in the 15th century BC, contain Egyptian words and idioms that fell out of usage a few centuries later. When the Hebrews entered Canaan, Canaanite words appeared in Scripture. When in contact with the Assyrians, Assyrian words appeared in Scripture. 
During the Babylonian captivity, when Daniel and Ezekiel were written, Babylonian words and Babylonian idioms appeared in Scripture. So rest assured, these canonical books were contemporary books written when the prophets claimed they were, and they remain unchanged to this day. Ellis Schofield Please visit Ellis Schofield's site for much more, particularly in regard to Islam and Bible prophecy. The following is not a part of the above paper. The Quran and Abrogation Let's take a look at the textual integrity of the Quran by comparison as bequeathed to us by the Quran and the Hadith themselves. Though the Quran has a short 23 year history, it is so self contradictory that a whopping 71 out of only 114 surahs require abrogation. In stark contrast, the Bible spans a period from Moses in about 1446 BC to the book of Revelation written around the end of the first century. Over that period, mankind developed from desert-dwelling nomads to advanced nations that could follow religious law as well as secular laws of kings and emperors. It is important to note that parts of the Old Testament are purely historical record that in no way imply God's tacit approval of what was recorded of those events. These portions simply chronicle events that took place. In spite of its near 1600 year history and a large volume of prophets and legions of witnesses, God's word requires no abrogation. It should be apparent that the Quran's voluminous abrogation required for a record of recitations of an illiterate that were collected over the brief span of just 23 years demonstrates not divine revelation but the changing whims of its author. A good example is the convenient revelation that allowed Muhammad to take his stepson's wife. The Al-Nasik wal Masuk, the abrogator and the abrogated, is the Arabic language book that details what is abrogated by what. According to Muhammad, none of our revelations do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. Knowest thou not that Allah hath power over all things? Not abrogated, just substituted for something better. Later surahs abrogate those that occur earlier. Surahs like, I will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers, smite ye above their necks, and smite all their fingertips off them, comprise the better substitute for the verses way back in Surah 2, let there be no compulsion in religion. It would seem Muhammad knew what a mess it was. When we substitute one revelation for another, and Allah knows best what he reveals in stages, they say, Thou art but a forger but most of them understand not. Even Mohammed knew he'd be viewed as a fraud. Please visit IslamReview.com for more on abrogation. For much more on the textual history of the Quran, please read Islam Reviewed by former Muslim M. Ali, published by Fishhouse Ministries and available in PDF at Ellisgofield.com or in HTML at BeholdTheBeast.com. It wasn't until after 632 that a standardized text began to be compiled from inscriptions on palm leaves, stones, and memories of reciters that survived the Battle of Akraba. Once compiled, the Quran was subsequently collected up and all but a preferred version burned on two separate occasions, once under, once under Abu Bakr and again under Caliph Uthman. Islam is the inevitable result of a tangled web of deception. Please visit TheReligionOfPeace.com to see the fruit. The Quran could never be made better, whether through abrogation or otherwise. In fact, it is a terminally repetitive and self-contradicting record of recitations of an illiterate 7th century false prophet that is the exact opposite of the revelation of God through Jesus Christ. Perhaps the most violent thing Jesus did was overturn the tables of the money changers, the polar opposite of the way Muhammad is revealed to the Quran and Hadith. Muhammad rejected all of the New Testament disciples and apostles that walked and talked with Jesus, and he rejected the whole subject of the New Testament, which is the new covenant we are given through Jesus Christ. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. No surprise that Muhammad was alone. Islam is the only anti-another religion religion. Islam is anti-Christ. He is Antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. The full text of the first epistle of John, from the same version the famous Islamic sophist Ahmadida used, is available at IslamandTheTruth.com. Why not read it for yourself and see if you agree with Didat about it confirming Muhammad?